No one person should have to live in poverty, and no one person hopes that someone has to. Poverty is a terrible thing, and this is something that we can all agree on. However, what people often disagree is finding solutions to help solve the poverty problem. In particular, the issue of whether or not to increase the minimum wage. As students, many of you have or work, have worked or are currently working job, may be currently working a job where you are paid a wage for the service or skill that you provide. That wage may or may not be the federal minimum wage of $7.25 per hour. The minimum wage is a critical issue for us, not because it could directly benefit how much money we make, but because of the other ways it can impact us and those around us. As a working student, I know how the minimum wage works. And I know that some of you may feel strongly about increasing it as a way to <coughs> get more money, because who doesn't love money? However, after further research, I now know how the minimum wage works and who it affects. The minimum wage should not be increased because it will not effectively help those in poverty, will create negative consequences for businesses, and is not the most effective option to solving the poverty problem. In this speech, I will briefly describe the minimum wage, the problems and consequences of increasing it, and other possible solutions to help fight poverty. Initially, I will begin by further detailing the minimum wage. As told by Jeanne Meyer in her article, Maximum Divide on Minimum Wages, the first minimum wage was set at 25 cents per hour in 1938 and has since been raised 22 times as a part of the Fair Standards Labor Act. Defined by editor Joel Benotti in the U.S. Minimum Wage, quote, the Fair Standards Labor Act provides workers with minimum wage, overtime pay, and child labor protections, end quote. Essentially, it is a rule book that protects students' rights as workers as well as the other workers that work by the hour. However, many states also have a higher minimum wage than $7.25. According to the 2016 <laughs> Wages and Hours charts from the United States Department of Labor, 29 states currently have a minimum wage higher than $7.25. However, the debate still goes on, and many politicians have recently advocated for raising the minimum wage to as high as $12 or $15 as a way to decrease inequality and poverty. Now that I've told you a little bit about the minimum wage, I will now list some of the problems and consequences of increasing it. The first problem is the fact that, like the states, many businesses are already paying above the minimum wage. According to Pat Pape in his article, War of the Wages, quote, Quick Trip Corporations pay, pays all of its employees a starting salary above the minimum wage, plus rewards them with incentives, end quote. Many companies choose to do this by paying employees incentives based on attendance, customer service, and excess revenue. It, it falls into the theory as told by Jeff Klassen in his research, Minimum Wage, where, quote, a worker's perception of receiving a fair and advantageous wage will improve worker performance and reduce employee turnover, end quote. It makes sense, right? I can imagine that most of you would work harder and be less likely to quit your job if you were given a raise. And it's not just the big companies as well. As told in his article, Street Smarts, owner Norm Brodsky says, quote, we're paying the minimum wage for entry jobs such as busboys and dishwashers. Other hourly people are making more, but none as high as $15 per hour, end quote. This is because businesses would no longer be viable due to an increase in labor costs, and they can't raise their prices because customers have a willingness to pay. Some of the consequences can be seen in Clay Moffitt's piece in the business journal Serving Fresno. Moffitt quoted local business owners about the effects of the newly minimum wage of $15 per hour in the San Francisco area. When asked why his business was now closing on Mondays and Tuesdays and opening later throughout the rest of the week, <coughs> local business owner Craig Sharton, Sharton said, quote, we lose about $900 every Monday, Tuesday, and Sunday that we're open. My business is in critical condition. For the past several months, expenses have exceeded revenue. We made some cuts to our hours and payroll, but they didn't happen quickly enough, end quote. Imagine your boss called you into a meeting and said that due to an increase in prices, they have to cut some hours in staff and you're no longer with the job. A lower wage certainly beats unemployment. This is one of the many examples of being hit hard, businesses being hit hard by an increase in the minimum wage. So we must ask ourselves, is a couple of people making more money worth businesses struggling and potentially having to cut hours in staff? The final problem with the minimum wage is that it, does not, it fails to address the poverty, those in poverty. Many in favor of increasing the minimum wage speak of, first of all, speak of making it a living wage. The problem with this, as you can imagine, is that the cost of living differs throughout the country. Certainly it costs more to live in New York or California than it does in Iowa. But the cost of living can differ within the same state as well. 
According to Nobio.com, a statistical website that uses the consumer price index to measure cost of living, rent is 43.6% higher in Des Moines, Iowa than Cedar Rapids, Iowa. The cost of living differs vastly all over. There is also evidence that the minimum wage does not help those in poverty. In Barbara Mantle's report, Minimum Wage, she quotes Douglas Holtz Eakin as saying, quote, the minimum wage is a poor tool to fight poverty because it does not target those in poverty. Only 7% of those with a job are in poverty, <coughs> while only 20, 25% of those without a job are considered poor, end quote. Too often we associate having a job with being poor or not, and this is not often the, always the case. In addition, according to a report from the United States Department of Labor, only 4% of all workers were paid at <coughs> or below the minimum wage, and half of those workers were under the age of 25. This makes sense because most of, the, as you can imagine, most of the minimum wage workers are young people, similar to us, earning a single income. Increasing the minimum wage would help these people and not the low income families that need it the most. Now that I told you some problems and consequences of increasing the minimum wage, I will now list possible solutions to help fight poverty. According to Jan Meyer, several of the bills that have been proposed by Congress involve indexing or increasing the minimum wage over time. She says the benefits of this will be avoiding disagreements, wages keeping up with inflation, and businesses being, having time to prepare for an increase in their labor cost. Unfortunately, these, these pop possible options have not gained much support due to the fact that the minimum wage was still increased, and many believe businesses would turn toward, towards automation or outsourcing. The most popular solution, and potentially most successful, is the earned income tax credit. As David Newmark explains, only the wealthiest will be taxed and businesses will not have to raise their wages. In addition, Newmark says, quote, the earned income tax credit is based on in family income and structure. It effectively targets low income families while the minimum wage only targets low wage workers, end quote. Now that I've told you about the minimum wage consequences and problems with increasing it and possible solutions to fighting poverty, I'll begin to conclude the speech. No matter what your stance is on the minimum wage, it can be agreed, everyone can agree, that poverty is a terrible thing and no one should have to live in it. The minimum wage plays an important issue. It may or may not directly harm us, but increasing it will not effectively help those in poverty, businesses, and our economy. It is time we start looking at other options other than increasing the minimum wage, because we need to find a way to successfully help all those in poverty, <coughs> businesses, and all others that call America home.